real life. Oh, my name is Vito Brooklyn, and I am the man for you. Oh, yes, 100%. Oh. I'm the Italian man from Brooklyn, all right? Dinner, Italian style, spaghetti, and meatballs, and we're going to do it all overnight. Yeah. Gino! Hey, Gino! We got something going to Manny Can't Tell. We're out of here. Oh, How's it going, everybody? This is Big Vito LaGrasso from Staten Island, New York, via Brooklyn, you know, being with the five boroughs, and everybody's been waiting for my new show, you know, talking Italian with Big Vito, you know? A lot of people come through the pike and they want to do this, but you figure if you're going to do something right, you're going to do it yourself, you're going to show the people how it's done, all right? Now, we're going to do a little something here because, like, you know, I'm wearing my Adidas sweatsuit, got my, you know... My Kangaroo hat, my sunglasses, all right? Got my gold Rolexes on, you know, looking good, you know, in the neighborhood, you know, doing my Don thing like I always do, okay? We got to, let's start the story like this. Grew up in Bensonhurst when it was Bensonhurst. Back in the day when Uncle Quincy was running around doing his thing, you know? And my grandfather used to run 20 a day, and that's how the legacy started a little. You know, even though my family came from the other side over there in Italy and we were working in the fish town and stuff, you know, everybody got together and we you know we made the push over. Father came over, grandfather came over, everybody came over. And what do you know? We had a lot of spaghetti and meatballs. Everybody was doing their thing. And, you know, it was a great, great family feast. But as time went on, you know, we grew in the neighborhood. Grandfather started to run things a little more. Working with the Castellano family, you know what I mean? And doing his thing. And then the move came to Staten Island, you know? And Staten Island was a big thing. If you moved to Staten Island, it was like you were moving to the president, presidential stuff, you know? If you lived on Toad Hill, you were living in high on the hop, you know? And then, of course, you know, when you're living out there and you're doing your thing, you know? And you start to get involved in stuff like, you know card games, you know, nightclubs, you know, working at the, uh, you know, working the bistros, you know what I'm saying, and uh, it became a natural thing and a good fit, because this is how you grew up, this is how you did things, you know, there are a lot of guys, there were a lot of fake guys out there, you know what I'm saying, and there's a lot of guys who think they're like, you know, especially, you know, I have to give just a, just a random, like the wrestling business. There are a lot of guys who think they're Italian. A lot of guys who come out there and they talk with a freaking foot. Hey, how you doing? How's everything? Like, you're so fake. You know, it makes me sick to my stomach. They want to be so Italian. You know, they get calzone titties. You know what I mean? They get so fat and robust. You know, they think by eating all the time, it makes them somebody, you know? They think they're a button. You know, they're a button on nothing. They don't know nothing about nothing. But then when you're coming up and you look at these guys who are fugazi and all these guys who are doing things, you know, and uh, they're just, you know, they're phonies. They're big gangsters, you know. They're not tough. They don't know the right way to do things, how to communicate with the neighborhood, how to do their thing. Everybody takes lines from movies and thinks, you know, yeah, I'm in the mob. Or, yeah, you know, I'm gangster. If you're gangster, you never have to advertise. You just show up and people know. You feel what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Now, when you look at Vito LaGrasso, all I got to do is show up somewhere and people know I'm somebody special. Everybody knows I'm doing the right thing. I got the right moves. I got the right connections. I don't got to open my mouth to say nothing. But when I do open my mouth, that's when you got some problems out. You know? Now, I'll tell you, back in the day, I used to crack a few heads open because that's what it was called for. That was the job. I worked on some union jobs, you know, Jack Hammond's Union, Labor's Union, you know, this union, that union, made $33 an hour, made some scarrows on the side. Yeah, but that's the way you work back then because you know somebody that gets your job. You know, they got a job, you got to know somebody. But that's the way the connection back then. Now, all those wannabes out there, you know, they'll talk tough, act, try to act tough behind somebody else's else's shield. You know what I mean? They like, you know, you talk just like this this computer thing you got. Like everybody's a tough guy on the keyboard, you know, and everybody talks tough. But when it comes down to it, when you step in front of somebody, 
and you gotta rep your rep. You know what I mean? You gotta, you know, live by the code. That's when you, you know, talk and you separate from the men and from the boys. And let me separate your shoulder from your head. You know what I mean? Because sometimes I get sick in this nonsense that I see. And it's just terrible, you know what I mean? Talking Italian with Big Vito, you're trying to think you're in the mix, think you're in the gangster union, think you're a tough guy. But you know what? You're nobody special. You just don't want to be. You know, you're not even an earner. You're just a gopher. You're not even that. You're below that. It's like cutting lettuce at McDonald's. That's how terrible things are, all right? Now, we're sitting here, you know, when a couple things come to mind, you know, John Travolta, you know? Gotta give credit to John, all right? You know, he got his own slice down at Lenny's Pizzeria, you know, the big thing with Saturday Night Fever and back then, you know, being in Bensonhurst, you know, that was the biggest, you know, the biggest thing, like, you know, we have to him, you had Rocky Balboa, and then you had Steven Seagal movies, you know? It has to, you know, the regime you followed, you know? If you were hanging with your vault and watching your stuff, you know, you're going Rocky Balboa, then, you know, Hulk Hogan came in the mix a little bit, you know? And it was a great thing. And then when, you know, when John was there on 86th Street in Brooklyn, and when the club I used to go to back in the day, Romeo and Juliet, you know? You know, and uh, it was a good club, you know? A lot of things went on there. And I'm telling you, it was good. It was good. And this is not even like, you know, this is things I lived. This is how, how I did things. This is where I shop, where I lived. Live the 20th Avenue, 60 streets, go to 86th Street, still Bensoners all the way up to South Shore. And the people over there, the old, the old time gangsters, they know everything over there. They remember the old called Vets by the Verrazano Bridge, you know? When the Verrazano Bridge was only like $5, now it's $22. Like, they're still looking for Jimmy Hoffa over there. I don't think something's going on. I don't know. But anyway, guys, Travolta. He put Brooklyn on the map, you know what I mean? Brooklyn was a great place. But when Travolta did, and then when you seen that scene out there, when he got his own slice and he went back to his roots and he thanked the people, every wise guy in town came out of nowhere. Yeah, John, I can't believe what you're doing over there. John, yeah, it was great. You know, and they talk about Bensonhurst, you know, and talk about the Yankees. And they talk about all this other stuff, you know what I mean? It was a great day for all the Brooklynites to come out. You know, and share the wealth because they put John on the map and John was good enough to come back and share the thank you and appreciation because he was a staple in Brooklyn. You know what I mean? And then when he did welcome back, kind of, you know, New York trick, I went to FDR. You know what I mean? A little rivalry, John. You know what I mean? Uh, there was something going on there. But it was all good because when you handled your business, you know, we talk meditation to men to men, you know what I mean? It was mono and mono. There was no guns, there was no knives, there was no baseball bats. You took your fish, you slugged it out, and see who was the best neighbor. You see who was the best in the best, you know what I mean? So, congratulations to John Chibolte, you know what I'm saying? I gotta, I gotta give the guy credit, you know what I mean? He made a couple scrolls, you know, he did some good things. He had a lot of good dances, you know, they, that off the Murray School or something else. I'm telling you, all the babes that come out of there, and I got to ain't on something else. You know, there's another guy who made it from Brooklyn. You know, besides Big Vito LaGrasa. There's a guy called Dice Clay. You know, Dice, the Dice Man. You know what I mean? Now, he took it to another level. I mean, he was something special back in the day. I mean, you know, played the garden. He ran around Brooklyn, did the nightclub scene. You know, he's getting babes to the left of him, babes to the right of him. Babes in front of him, you know. He was a chick magnet. You know what I'm saying? But then, you know, something happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, some things just uh, kind of got a little fugazi with him. And, you know, you know, down the two Marinos he went. You know, he had those specials coming around, like the HBO special. You know, and, you know, the uh, Showtime special. The guy ran the garden. You know, he did have some good rhymes. You know, the Hickory Dickory Doc, this chick. You know the rest. Anyway. I gotta tell you, people, greatness that comes out of Brooklyn, greatness that comes from Italians, you know, the five boroughs, greatness that comes from the full-blooded Italians, you know, greatness from the Mamelukes, you know, greatness from the NYC, you know what I mean? It's just something phenomenal and something you can't explain, you know? 
But when you got people coming on here, they're trying to pretend to be somebody. They're really trying hard. It doesn't come off as natural as well. And I'm just being me. Now, I know everybody's been wanting to do this show and wanting to watch the show, and now you got it. So this is Talk of the Time with Big Vito, you know? You know, back in the day, we talked about Travolta earlier, you know? Travolta had a hell of a head of hair, you know? A hell of a head of hair, sort of Big Vito. You know, and when you talk about being a dancer, Travolta was a great dancer. I wanted to dance just as good as Travolta. And guess what? I danced better than Travolta. I got moves, okay? Then, you know, you talk about somebody else who came out of Brooklyn, where I don't think anybody really realized, you know what I mean? Like, is he Brooklyn, Staten? I don't think. Steven Seagal. You know, Steve. That guy, he had every movie in the book where he kicked ass and took names, never took a shot, never went down. I mean, he was phenomenal back then, you know what I mean? Did some great stuff. But, uh, Steve. I saw that one movie where you got your ass kicked by that guy at DMX to kind of ruin my, uh, you know, my feelings, you know, I got emotional there. I said, Steve, what happened? You're getting your ass kicked all over the TV screen. And then after that one ass kick and he went back to the ass kick, you know what I mean? So I guess kind of like it works, you know what I mean? I got a tear in my eye right now because I was so emotional about talking about this. You know, you know, I just got to say that, uh, these are the things that you brought up, Seagal movies, you know, TBS, the Superstation for guys who like movies, you know, you had, you know, a great documentary coming up, and you're speaking of Travolta, you know, I know we'll go back to John there, but he's doing it, he, you know, the documentary about John Gotti, you know, and you know the movie that's coming out, you know, Gotti, this is from my time, my era, this is how I lived, this is where I came up, you know. And you know, somebody else we used to hang out with back in Staten Island, Big Ange. Before she became, you know, superstar on TV, you know, lovely woman, good woman. You know, there she was, you know, Richmond Road down to the club, you know, hanging out at the bistro, you know what I mean? And uh, always a nice, hello, how are you doing? A kiss on the cheek. How's everything going tonight, you know? And that's when everybody used to hang together and everything used to be tight. Because, you know, on Thursdays, at the bistro, everybody who had a gumad, they brought it to the bistro. Now you knew what was going on, you know, these are married guys coming in. They came down to the bistro, they brought their gumads, everybody knew, nobody said nothing to the wife because that was the code, you know, that was the thing to do. Everybody had a side piece, you know what I'm saying? And if you didn't go to the bistro, you went to the Atlantis. And if you didn't go to the Atlantis, you went to the South Shore Country Club. But everybody knows, you know, it was Gumar tonight, you know what I mean? And those Gumar, they put out, they do the good spread, they do the gang, they take care of the man, they want to be pampered, you know, somebody even wanted you to pay their rent. And that's how, you know, tight it was, you know, they thought it was, you know, they pampered it for you, you know what I mean? They said they set it up for you, it made it good. But they got a little carried away, you know what I'm saying? They got a little spoon out, you got to give them a little slap. Hey, listen, you just slap your mouth, leave with my wife. Everything's gonna be alright, just to calm down, you know what I'm saying? Don't be stupid, don't run your mouth. You like what you got here, huh? You like it? You like the lifestyle? Just shut up. That's the way it was, you know? But uh, I gotta tell you, you know, after all this, you know, Chipotle stuff, and you got the. Uh, more Travolta stuff. And then you got that guy, you know, Travolta again, you know. He's just like, he became this icon. It's just, you know, he ran Brooklyn, ran Staten Island. And I gotta tell you, when Big Vito came around. The competition started, you know. We had the hair thing, we, we actually had a dance off, you know. You know, it's pretty close. You know, 2001 Odyssey, everybody remembers that night. We went back, we went to his grounds, went back to his club where he became famous, okay? I'm not going to talk about what happened afterwards, but you know, we're talking about John. You know, it's, you know, it's nice to see he's got his face fixed up, you know, it looked good, for the, you know, for the pizza. Anyway, 
this is just a sample of what's coming up. You know, we're going to talk about Dice. We're going to talk about Chipotle. We're going to talk about Brooklyn. We're going to talk about Gangster. We're going to talk about everything. We're just going to talk Italian. If you have a subject you want to talk about and you want to talk to me about it, hit me up on my on my email, all right? Hit me up on the website, BigVito, BigVito.com. That's the email, okay? Go to BigVito.com. You want to do some, want to buy some gangster stuff? Go to BigVito.com. I got a store, okay? Be careful. You steal anything, I'm going to break your thumbs, all right? You do something stupid, I'm going to slap you one, maybe two, all right? Now, for everybody out there, go to the Big Vito brand. This is just a little sample, a little taste, a little appetizer, see, all right? And don't listen to those fake gangsters go, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Don't listen to those guys, all right? Because they're fakes, they're phonies, they're, they're phony people, and I can't stand phony gangsters, all right? The guys who've got the milk dud titties and are hanging down from their sweatsuits, don't even look at them because they're even more fake than anybody else, especially if they're only 5'8". You know what I mean? And you know, everybody thinks because they're on the gas, you know what I mean, and working out. What happens when you stop for a couple weeks, you become a fat slob. So I mean, you know, give me a break, all right? You wanna work out, work out the right way, look good, feel good, do things good, you know? Go take care of yourself. This is Big Vito from the Big Vito brand signing off. I hope you enjoyed this segment of Talking Italian with Big Vito. Next week, we got some other stuff coming around, all right? So if you want to talk about some stuff, bring it my way, all right? Come down the alley. Let's share some thoughts. Let's see who comes out of where. This is the Big Vito brand signing off. Peace out. Hey, yo.